So it's hard to believe that 10 years ago, maybe 11 now, that I had a fully loaded pistol in my mouth ready to pull the trigger. And you may ask, why is an Olympic champion, Stanley Cup champion, seven-time All-Star got a gun in his mouth ready to pull the trigger? Well, my experience as a very young child was one of living in fear. Constantly living in fear. My dad was an alcoholic, my mom was a prescription pill addict, and my complete and entire existence in life was complete and utter chaos. Complete and utter chaos. And guess what? I was the most mature person in that situation. And so I was the referee. And little did I know that being the referee in that situation would change me for the rest of my life. And so the reason why I had this gun in my mouth was I was completely and utterly exhausted from living in emotional pain and suffering for most of my life. And then when I was 14 years old, over two and a half year period of my life, I was raped 150 times by my coach. And so, what I was left to deal with was the aftermath of all of these traumatic experiences. And so I never slept for 27 years. Never slept. Never slept a wink. Because I was molested in a dark room where I couldn't see anything. And so every time I shut my eyes at night, I was in that dark room waiting for this man to force himself upon me. Shocking, isn't it? It is so quiet in here right now. Well, guess what? My reality is the same reality that one in three girls and one in four, five boys have experienced in their lifetime. So don't be shocked anymore. This is the sad reality in the state that we live in, okay? So I became addicted to drugs and alcohol and sex and gambling and food and workaholism to overcome the pain and suffering from my childhood and adolescent experience. And the thing that I loved to do the most was I loved to play hockey. Okay? And hockey and being the best and the greatest saved my life, okay? Saved my life. And when I was six years old, I moved to a community in Russell, Manitoba. When I got there, it just so happened that the 13 best athletes in this little town of Russell, Manitoba were all six years old, were all my age. 
And not only that, we had three amazing, incredible fathers who became our coaches and became our mentors. And you know what they taught us? They taught us three things about life that are absolutely critical and important if we're going to solve the issue of mental health. Respect, respect, respect is the first thing that we learned. You know how we started with respect? Please and thank you was how we started with respect. And when we met people, we reached our hand out, we looked them in the eye and we said, nice to meet you, ma'am. Nice to meet you, sir. Every rink that we went into, every dressing room we entered it, we left it exactly the same way we entered it. There was never chip can, pop bottles, tape. It was clean, because it was about respect. And then the second thing we learned was to love and care for our teammates. To love and care for your neighbors, your aunts, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters. Love and care. And then we were taught about consequences. That we are responsible for our decisions and for our actions. And these three things became the core of my success as a professional athlete. But I faced consequence because of my drug addiction and my alcoholism was they kicked my ass out of the NHL. And that was the consequences of my actions, my choice to get the straw, to break the line out, to sniff it, to drink the alcohol was my choice. And so shortly after the gun incident, and obviously I didn't pull the trigger, because I'm still here, was I started on a path of healing and recovery. Healing and recovery. Now what does that look like? I don't even know to this day what it looks like because I'm still on my journey and I'm on my path. I've strung over 3,000, I don't know, 500 and some days of sobriety, right? It's not about years, it's about days because it's a 24 hour disease and every day I get up and I do the same thing 24 hours at a time and next thing you know I got 3,500 consecutive days of sobriety. But along the way, I met all these incredible people who were on the same journey and the same path as me. And I started to have conversations with them. So in 2003, I retired from hockey and in 2009, I wrote this book called Playing With Fire. With no expectations. Other than the fact that I just want to put a bunch of stuff on paper, take one last look at it, and put it in its rightful place in the past. So I go to Toronto for the first book signing. Like I said, with no expectations. And I show up at the biggest bookstore in Canada, and 400 people show up too at this book signing. I'm like, this is weird. What are these people doing here? Why are they here? You know, I'm not Wayne Gretzky. You know, I didn't score 3,000 points, you know? Yeah, I was a fourth line centerman on a Stanley Cup team in 1989, and I was a fourth line right winger on Canada's 2002 Olympic gold medal team. I'm the 60th all-time scorer in the NHL. You know, why are all these people here? What are they doing here? Well, I started signing books. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this guy in line. And he's got my book like this clutch to his chest and his face is buried in the floor and he's walking really slow. And I followed him all the way in the line. Gets to the front of the line, sets the book on the table, looks me in the eye and says, me too. 
me too. Now I know why I wrote this book. Because I go to the next city, and 10 quickly became 100, 100 became 1,000, 1,000 became 10,000, 10,000 became 100,000, 100,000 became a quarter of a million, a quarter of a million became 500,000. So since 2009, when Playing Fire came out, over 500,000 people, either directly or indirectly, have said those two words to me, me too, me too. Dr. Gabor Mate talked about trauma. Kim Barthel talked about trauma. We're all talking about trauma. The most profound thing that I ever heard was at a conference in Barrie, Ontario from a very smart and wise lady. She said trauma is the string which binds us all together. Because it's the human experience. Trauma is the human experience. We are not immune from trauma. We are not immune from trauma. And so for six years I've traveled back and forth and 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 and everywhere else in between talking about trauma. Talking about trauma. And I've met the absolutely the most amazing, incredible people. And heard the most incredible, amazing stories. And I guess what I did in 2009 was I created a conversation. Conversation that nobody ever wants to talk about. Trauma. And trauma is not sexual abuse, okay? That's one little piece of the puzzle. Trauma is, comes in all shapes, sizes, forms, people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And when we experience trauma in childhood, it eventually manifests itself into some sort of mental health issue. Which is the biggest epidemic on the planet is mental health. The biggest epidemic on the planet is mental health. And our prime minister, who just got kicked out, was traumatized and he's running our country. All those people who are fighting over in the Middle East, guess what? (laughs) Their lives started with trauma. So we have an opportunity. The greatest opportunity that's ever been presented to us in the history of mankind is that we can put an end to all of this If we're willing to talk about how do we heal from trauma, guess what? I'm healed. I've healed. I'm healing. I'm putting one foot in front of the other. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxious. I don't have panic attacks anymore. Why? Because I started a conversation. And then that conversation started another conversation. You know, it's like Vidal Sassoon was the greatest marketer of all time, right? Because he said, tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. And that's what this is about. It's about sharing your story without shame without fear, 
and be okay and be safe. Because you know what? In 2009, I was shitting in my pants going, what have I just done? And you know what you all did for me? You know what you said? You didn't shame me. You know what you said? Man, you have courage. Man, you have strength. And guess what? That's all I needed to hear. It was two sentences. And then that empowered me. And then it empowered the gentleman to somehow get to that book signing and tell me me too. Because I needed to hear it. And who are we to judge anybody? If you judge somebody, you're sick and you need help. That's the bottom line. You're sick and you need help. Don't put your shit on other people's plates. Because it's not their shit, it's your shit. And have the courage and the balls to face it head on. And I know I'm saying it in a forceful voice because I want to be heard. I want you to hear what I'm saying because my experience is one in three people have had the same experience as I've had. And they want a place to tell their truth. They need you to tell their truth too. They need you, and they need you, and they need you, and they need you, and they need you in the back of the room to be okay with this stuff. Because that's how we're gonna solve the issue of mental health. Is by creating a conversation that is never been had and guess what as Canadians we can lead we can lead this conversation because we're all capable we're nice people that's who we are we're nice people and we're forgiving people and we're loving people and we love this country Well, there's a whole bunch of people out there that are hurting, that need a safe place to tell their story. One in three, look in, look in the room. How many people are in the room? One in three. One in three. One in three. And because I've been a part of some of the greatest teams in the history of this game, the 1989 Stanley Cup Flames, the 2002 Canadian Olympic team, well, guess what? You like hockey, you like being a part of a team. I'm creating the greatest team ever assembled in the history of mankind. Do you want to be a part of it? I want you to be a part of it. I need you to be a part of it. And if you don't know what you're doing, hey, we'll teach you along the way. We'll give you the tools. Because this is my destiny. The reason why I had to go through all of the stuff that I had to go through in my life is to get me to this point in my life. So my parents were a gift. Graham James was a gift. All of the struggles in my life, gifts. Not burdens, gifts. Gifts in my life. Struggle brings gifts. Pain brings gifts. So we've created the Breaking Free Foundation, BFF. 
And we want you to join the BFF cause to create this global conversation that we're trying to have around the subject of mental health and trauma. Trauma and mental health, right? And stop pointing your, stop, please stop. Stop pointing fingers at other people. Because you know what my grandfather said? If I point one finger at you, guess what? There's always three pointing right back at me. And if something pisses me off about you, guess what? I have the exact same characteristic. Because in your eyes, I see myself as. And when that happens, that's called a trigger. And what, you know what triggers are? An opportunity and a room to grow as a human being. That's what it is. Those are opportunities to grow as human beings. So I want to thank all of you, especially Justin and his team of people that have created this incredible conversation. And thank you all for sitting and listening and being a part of the conversation today. Because you know, I spoke to 100 coaches who coach youth hockey. And I said to them, your job is not to create the next NHL star because it's not going to happen. There's 700 jobs in the NHL and most of them are taken. So there's eight and a half million kids every year playing for 20 or 30 jobs a year because that's all that's available every year in the NHL. That's it. I said, your job as a coach of youth Hockey players is to create hu great human beings. That's what your job is. And your experience is you need to learn more from those kids than you teach them. That is your goal. And that's the same for all of us. Is that every relationship that we're in, there's a reason why we're in the relationship because I need to learn something from you because there's a reason you're put in my life. It's because I need to learn from you. And it's about compassion. Compassion, compassion, compassion. Leaders cannot lead with ego. Cannot lead. The worst leaders in the world lead with ego. That's why we're in the situation and the turmoil that we're in, because we have a bunch of egomaniacs with inferiority complexes who are running the world. We need people and leaders that talk about compassion, talk about love, talk about connection, and are willing to have the tough, tough, tough conversations. And leaders aren't born. Leaders are people who are willing to change themselves on a daily basis and walk the walk and talk the talk. And this is how I crushed my own ego. And I'll leave you with this, and this will be the end of my talk. Is every day since I've been sober, I wake up in the morning and I say this prayer, and I go to bed and I say this prayer every night. And it's the third step prayer in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Google it. It'll pop right up. It goes something like this. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self so that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy love, thy power, 
and thy life. May I do thy will always. Have a great night. Thank you.